Welcome to the Your Town Television Program. My name is Jeff Klein, your host for this segment, sponsored by the Naval Postgraduate School Foundation that brings you interesting stories of faculty, students, and what we're doing at the school, both in our research and support for the nation's strength. Uh, we've been talking about the Undersea Warfare Program for several segments, and we've had uh, the Chair of Undersea Warfare, Admiral Ellis, on. We've also had several students, and I'd like to bring you another student now, Lieutenant Ridge uh, Alconis. Welcome to the show, Ridge. Welcome to be, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Well, you are one of our many talented professional students on campus. And before we talk to you about what you're studying and uh, the research you're doing under the Undersea Warfare Program, let's find out a little bit more about you. And I uh, ask this of all our uh, Navy officers, or actually some of our Army and Air Force officers that come on the show too, what made you join the Navy? Uh, you know, I was always fond of military service, something that I really uh, look towards as a career that might fit for me and then the Navy particularly I just always had an affinity for the ocean particularly seagoing vessels and so it seemed like a good fit. Did you have a family uh, that was associated with the ocean at all? Uh, my grandfather was an avid uh, sport fisher and loved to be on the water in his boats and sailing and all of that and so growing up we spent a lot of time cruising around the the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Los Angeles. Oh really? So yeah. you're a native born California? Yeah, born in uh, Torrance, California just outside of Los Angeles and born and raised pretty much throughout the area. Do you still have family there? Still do, yes. Uh, mom, dad, a lot of family still Well they're probably there. happy you're up in Monterey then. Yeah, it's a lot closer than I've been previously, so they're they're very happy. Well, let's get to that career. So, uh, how did you how did you enter the Navy? What was your uh, commissioning source? Uh, I commissioned through the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, okay. and I graduated in 2012. So, how did you find out about the academy? I had three cousins that went to West Point, uh, and I looked at that. And you could read. And I could read, <laughs> you know and uh, <laughs> and took a took a trip up there and decided it uh, it wasn't for me. Right but that the Naval Academy uh, provided me with some opportunities that West Point couldn't quite match. So, Well, that's fascinating mm -hmm. that you had that much uh, history with the uh, West Point and the Army and you decided to go Navy. Mm -hmm. What did you study while you were at the Academy? Uh, oceanography with a minor in Japanese. Well, sure, because mm -hmm. those two <laughs> actually fit quite well together. Mm -hmm. They're uh, parallel. What, what made you interested in Japanese? Uh, so. During my time as a midshipman, I took a little bit of a, of a break. I took two years to be a uh, missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints mm -hmm. and served that in Japan. So while I was there, I learned Japanese. And upon returning to the academy to finish my studies, I took Japanese classes to make sure that I wouldn't forget any of the language skills that I picked up while I was away. So that's great. The academy allowed mm -hmm. you to do your missionary work uh, mm -hmm. uh, while you were there. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, you studied oceanography and you mitered in Japanese because mm -hmm. of your experience. Where did you live in Japan, by the way? I'm sorry. I lived quite a few places in Japan, but interestingly, the first place that I lived was a little town called Nanao, Japan, mm -hmm. which is the sister city to Monterey. Oh, was that right? Yes. So Did um, you know that while you lived there? I did. They yeah. have a small uh, kind of cannery row uh, relic or replica there, mm -hmm. so I was very aware, and they... Uh, they're very fond of their connection to Monterey. Well, that's great. Do you still have friends there that you come uh, right do. back? Or so? Oh, fantastic. I do. Have they ever come back to visit here at all? No, no, unfortunately not, but I hope to, to go back there and visit again. It was a great place to live. All right, well, getting back to our chronological mm -hmm. order here, <laughs> you graduated from the academy, but mm -hmm. what d made you decide, uh, uh, what service did you go in after that? So I became a service warfare officer upon okay. graduation, and I just, like I said before, I always had a strong affinity for being at sea and a desire to be a part of that, and I was very excited to become a service warfare officer. So what was your first ship? Uh, the USS Fitzgerald, home ported out of Yokosuka, Japan. Oh, so you went back mm -hmm. to Japan. Went back to Japan. Right. And so tell us a little bit about the USS Fitzgerald. What type of ship is she? Uh, USS Fitzgerald is an Arleigh Burke class destroyer and um, can do a little bit of everything. It's kind of the workhorse of the, of the fleet right now. and. Primarily, the major missions we did were anti-submarine warfare and ballistic missile defense. Oh, so you had to go out on a ballistic missile defense station from Korea and that sort of thing and rotate yes. through there? Yes. Wow, that must have been interesting work. Mm -hmm. What did you do on board? Uh, I actually com I did two tours on board the U.S. Fitzgerald. So the first one was as first lieutenant, and the second one was anti-submarine warfare officer. Well, tell us what the first lieutenant does. First Lieutenant is in charge of most of the seamanship uh, equipment on board, so we took care of the anchors, 
We took care of the small boats. We took care of all the life-saving equipment and pretty much anything that makes a, a vessel seaworthy, we were in charge of. So you had all the bosun mates on the deck force and that sort of thing? Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's a great leadership job for your first job. Uh, but then you became the anti-submarine warfare officer. What did those duties entail? Uh, I was first and foremost in charge of the sonar technicians and managed them as, as they ma and made sure that they were trained and equipped and uh, that they were performing the maintenance on the sonar equipment so that we could use it when directed. And that is a big sonar mm -hmm. on one of those mm -hmm. uh, DDGs. So uh, usually can you, you search for submarines with that thing but actively by putting uh, noise in the water and then can you search for them any other way? Uh, yes, we have two passive sensors on board, one that's located on the, on the hull on the, in the bow of the ship and then we also have a towed sonar array that we can pull behind the ship that allows us to detect submarines passively at even further distances. Noises and that sort of thing in the mm -hmm. water. So well, while you were in Fitzgerald, you operated mainly in the Pacific or did you ever go in the Indian Ocean? I never made it to the Indian Ocean, uh, but pretty much all over the Western Pacific. And as a four deployed ship, uh, and you were there for two years or? Four years on board the oh, Fitzgerald. Oh, four years, all that time. And then from there you came here? Or? And then I came straight here. So what made you think about coming to the Naval Postgraduate School? Uh, one, the, the opportunity to get an education in the field that I was operating in was something that only NPS could offer. And the USW curriculum seemed like a great fit for me, having an educational background in oceanography that is strongly tied to the undersea domain, and then the ability to continue my studies in a way that would directly affect my, my future in the Navy and help my employer going forward seemed like a no-brainer to me. Well, it did. So you're combining oceanography with um, uh, with an undersea warfare program here, your experience of, as an anti-submarine warfare, you're going to be one of our experts in anti-submarine warfare. Now, um, we were describing earlier that the undersea warfare program is not actually a major. What is your actually major inside that program? Uh, engineering acoustics. Wow, so what do you study on that? So that's the physics behind how sound operates. Um, and for us, mostly in water is what we're focused on. Mm -hmm. So how to uh, receive that sound or build the sensors associated with it? Uh, both, yeah. How do we receive that sound? How do we create that sound in a way that will allow us to detect things and how the, in, how the environment interacts with the sound? Well, so tell us some of the courses that you had to take uh, for both your major and to satisfy the requirements of the Undersea Warfare Program. The Undersea Warfare Program is one of the, maybe the most diverse program that we have at NPS. So I've taken classes from the math department, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, physics departments, uh, the operations research department to satisfy the requirements from the USW side. Now from the engineering acoustics side, it's mostly uh, out of the physics department and based on understanding the, how sound operates in the water. So you get a sense for faculty all across the campus. Well, I'm not going to go with who you enjoyed most because <laughs> we're recording this one and it's going to be televised. But uh, And how many quarters have you been here now, or how, how, how long? Uh, I've been here since June of 2016, so I ha and I have three quarters left. So you're starting to focus on your specific research uh, for your thesis. Tell us a little bit about that. So I'll be, my research is focused on vector sensors, which is a type of sensor that detects the particle velocities of, that sound waves produce as they go through the water. So it's just a new way of detecting sound in the water, pretty much. Well, this sounds like you're a physical characteristic of the sound wave that goes through the water and a detection of that physical signature of the, of the noise, is that it? Yes, and so my research will be focused on how the the vector fields in the ocean are affected by rough, the acoustic vector fields are affected by rough surface scattering in the ocean, so the ripples and the, the, the waves that are caused by other atmospheric and environmental phenomenon. And so uh, for as a better understanding of the of the noise that's created by the surface interface, uh, our real objective for that I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to understand the source of the noise and the direction it's coming from by untangling all the mess that the surface interaction causes it. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. So the surface, when it's jumbled like that, when you think of uh, heavy seas or or ripples in a pond, Usually they can provide negative effects on sound bouncing off that kind of a surface, but every once in a while maybe 
the idea is that it can provide a positive reinforcing effect and we're going to study to see if that effect is great enough that we can use it to possibly detect something we couldn't otherwise. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So are, are you doing most of this modeling or are you collecting data at sea in order to do uh, this? This is all modeling. And, and how do you draw upon your oceanography experience in the, uh, from your undergraduate degree to help inform the research you're doing now? Uh, I think it's been invaluable all the way through my time here at, at the Naval Postgraduate School, having that foundation and how the environment shapes the what we're looking at has really helped me understand what what the problem is trying to get me to trying to lead me towards well you know all the, all this combination both with your educational experience and your practical experience sort of leads you to as i said that expert in anti-submarine warfare the service community is just now exploring with something called weapons tactical instructors where they take these specialists and focus just on that warfare area. Are you going to be doing that next or what will you be doing next after graduation? Uh, I will not be doing that next. Oh. I would like to. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have quite enough time until uh, my next firm assignment. But after I leave here, I'll, I'm still looking for an opportunity out there. So I'm working with uh, our personnel f folks back in Millington, Tennessee to find a, a job for me, but after that's done, then I'll be heading to uh, Newport, Rhode Island for department head school to prepare to go back to sea. So you're talking about the gap between your graduation and when you go back to sea. Yes. Where, where do you want to go next? You know, I, I'm not, I'm keeping an open mind. Uh, sometimes that can be, having too strong of a wish list can lead <laughs> to disappointment, so. I'm excited to see what's available. Absolutely. If you write anywhere, anytime, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then that's exactly where you'll get assigned mm -hmm. in all cases. Well, uh, on a surface ship, uh, you uh, worked on the deck department and you worked in uh, uh, weapons or combat systems department as the ASW officer. What other opportunities will you have when you go back to sea that you might work at? So the I'm hoping to work as a weapons officer to once again work closely with the. So that's the guy in charge of, of the ASW officer. Uh, who else? The gunnery officer. Gunnery officer, yeah. strike officer. So he was my immediate superior while, or that that title was my immediate superior while I was the anti-submarine warfare. And officer. so you want to go to that job after you graduate from here? Yes. Right. Okay. And, and the what other opportunities, though, that you have? Yeah, so the operations officer would also uh, lend to my background as a first lieutenant, and they also uh, they also participate heavily in combat operations and operational tasking and things. So that that would also work well for me, or be a good fit. And there's a third choice. Uh, those are the two that I would hope. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. There are more choices, but those yeah. are the two that I would hope that I would be able to get. Well, there's a chief engineer's position, mm -hmm. of course, which. Uh, keeps the plant moving mm -hmm. and the ship through the water. And that's why I was really asking you, since you're getting an engineering degree, mm -hmm. if that might be an option. But it sounds like it's more on the combat system mm -hmm. side, and that's what you desire mm -hmm. more than anything else. Um, how about an area, geographic region? You've, you've been in, around the, um, uh, the Pacific. By the way, let's talk about that for a minute. What was some of the fun places you visited while you were on uh, or in Fitzgerald and, and the Pacific Fleet? Uh, Singapore, I really enjoyed my time in Singapore, the Philippines, Korea, Hong Kong. I've been to Guam quite a few times. Uh, so and you hadn't visited any of those places before. No, those oh. were all brand new to me. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was a great time. I really enjoyed my time operating in the in the Western Pacific. So where would you like to go as far as geographic regions go next? I would love to go back to Japan. I really enjoyed my time out there and in wake of the recent events out there with some of the tragedies, I would love to go be a part of the solution out there and really help those ships get back on their feet. So you're referring to uh, both the collisions uh, that occurred from our destroyers uh, and some of the other accidents mm -hmm. that occurred out there. And I know that uh, our surface Navy has gone through major uh, reviews uh, associated with that and I think they're looking for uh, the talent that uh, you and other young officers provide in order to make sure that we're both seamen and warriors uh, at the same time, which is great. Um, well, uh, you have taken a, a variety of courses here at the at the postgraduate school. Are you also taking uh, warfare or naval warfare classes at all uh, from the war college? Is that an option, or is that part of your curriculum? 
That is, uh, it's phased right into my curriculum, uh, so I am one class short of finishing my joint professional military education. So let's explain that for a little bit. A joint professional military education is something that is required of all uh, officers, actually, uh, in the uh, Department of Defense. Uh, for the Navy, lieutenants are allowed to start uh, their phase one here because we have Naval War College faculty on the campus at the Naval Postgraduate School to offer this. So tell me a couple of the courses that uh, you've taken based on that. So I took strategy and war, and I also took a class based on, um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm coming short on the name right now. Giovanni, Giovanni or? <laughs> um, but I, I enjoyed, I took, I've taken three classes in total. One yeah. was a two-parter, and then I have one left. And, and most of these deal with strategy and policy, operational mm -hmm. level of war, which is actually completely different than their engineering uh, studies and that sort of thing. So uh, that's another thing that not only have you taken an interdisciplinary degree, which is quite challenging, uh, mind you, in mathematics, in physics, uh, in oceanography, um, uh, but also uh, you now take your war college courses that talks about operational level of war, uh, national power, and that sort of thing. Uh, t t how were you able to get your two sides of your brains working on that uh, at the same time? I mean, one is very engineering and one is very um, uh, very strategic and operational mm -hmm. in nature. You know, that, that was actually was a challenge and the ability to write critically in the way that the Naval War College requires of you was something that I was very much out of practice. Uh, professional naval writing is nothing like that that the Naval War College expects of its students. So to get back into the swing of that uh, was difficult, but luckily there's uh, the Graduate Writing Center that the library has that, is, that was a great asset to me, and I know some, many of my other students utilize that resource as well. Did uh, any of your work from your coursework at the postgraduate school help inform what you wrote for the award college classes? Uh, actually, yes. Yeah. So uh, I know you heard from Admiral Ellis earlier, right. and his he t gave us a class, kind of a, an overview of the history of, of anti-submarine warfare and the role that it's played in in U.S. military. And some of the things that I learned in his class definitely influenced how I how I wrote those papers uh, at the Naval War College. Well, uh, Ridge. Thank you very much for the service that you've done for us uh, in this part of the four deployed fleet in Japan. And um, I look forward to seeing you graduate in a couple months here. And I look forward also to see very productive work on your thesis. And thank you for being on the show. All right, thank you very much. We've had uh, Lieutenant Ridge Alconis here as part of the undersea warfare curriculum as a student. Uh, we hope that uh, you've enjoyed both the information that we've shared, the research and important research that our faculty and students are doing here uh, to enhance our capabilities and our nation's defense. Thank you for joining us at the Your Town Television Program, and join us again for future segments sponsored by the MPS Foundation that brings you the highlights of our capabilities for our local university supporting our National Navy.